it's so great that we're talking about Simon. Uh, are you familiar with his music? No, I, I've done a lot of reading about him. I know he was very controversial, especially oh, yeah. that particular album cover. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, it's really funny because uh, it, it goes back. You know, Simon um, was actually a staff writer at Electra. Okay. And, um, you know, he was knocking around and, and he had become friends with a couple of the musicians who were um, uh, Neil Diamond's band. And Neil Diamond had built a recording studio in his backyard and he let his band members go in there and do whatever they want. I mean, if they want to cut a single, they want to record some songs. He was just really that kind of guy. And Simon got to know him as well. So they kicked around a lot, you know, with that. And then I found that out after I had met him. He, he had signed to Spin Dizzy Records. And uh, I don't know whether you know anything about Spin Dizzy, but Spin Dizzy was started by a guy named, um, uh, his name was Art Lenson. Oh, Art Linson, I remember. Wasn't he the one that gave you the hard time when you were working yeah. with Jojo Gunn? <laughs> Thank you for remembering Jojo Gunn, yeah. You know, I mean, we talk about mistakes that we made in our lives. I mean, that was one that I, I totally regret. I mean, I was, you know, he just got on my nerves. I threw him out of the office, and then he went on. I mean, not long. He had started Spin Dizzy, I think, in 71, but by 73, he had closed it down. And now I think Spin Dizzy is a record store somewhere. It's a big online record store. But, but uh, you know, he closed it down because he got into the movie business. He did Fast Times at Ridgemont High. He did a lot of really big films. And the regret there is, is that, you know, maybe I would have been able to do some of those movie posters <laughs> if I had been so, but he, you know, sometimes you just can't help it. And, and when I was younger and this was in our first office at the crossroads of the world, we had moved out of our little one bedroom house up on the hill there on, on Ivar and Vine right above Capitol records. And we had moved into uh, Mel, Mel Blank's first recording studio in the crossroads of the world, which was this complex that all these little, little office buildings and stuff, very much like the Seven Dwarfs, you know, Snow White. I mean, it was these little cottages, and it was mainly built for the movie business. And there were a lot of independent producers and writers, and, you know, Mel, like I said, Mel Blanks had a recording studio there before he moved into a other facility. But, you know, it was, it was really kind of a, a, a great place to be. It was you know, it was really more in the style of sort of guy here because we were never the big fancy uh, office with the marble floors. And, you know, that just wasn't us. I mean, you know, when we, we, we moved in there, we, we painted the floor silver. You know, we hung our album cover sheet proofs from the printers all over the walls. We, you know, I mean, it was a really different kind of place. And, you know, I, I, and Simon Stokes was a different kind of recording artist. He was, and, and I know him because, uh, or I knew about him a little bit because of he, he was friends with, like I said, Art Linson. Art Linson was friends with Jack Holzman. Jack Holzman started Electra Records. Okay, and he really liked Simon because Simon was a kick. I'll tell you, you know, when we first met him, he, I saw him come walking up the way at the crossroads here, and he looked like a biker. He looked like a hell's angel. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, what's this? You know, who is this guy who comes into the office and Skip Taylor's mom is our, our receptionist, you know. Uh, Skip manages the can heat and a whole bunch of other groups. But and we became friends with him because his mom was our secretary. Um, but uh, Simon came in and it was like, you know, it was like a hell's angel walking into your office. He was like that. He had all the, the stuff, the, the vest and. You know, didn't have any colors on his back, but I didn't see him from the back at first. And he comes in and Jack Holzman had suggested, because now we're doing, you know, we're, we're doing work for Electra Records. Jack went on to, to run Panavision and brought us in there. We were in there for like eight years at Panavision doing all their stuff, Panavision movie cameras, and, and including their logo that I revised without telling him. But uh, uh, so Simon, Simon had signed to uh, Spin Dizzy Records and he and, you know, and Art and Jack were friends. And Jack said, hey, you know, you should really 
check these guys out. They're really cool. And I really like Simon. I'd like him to get a really good album cover. So Simon comes over without art. Uh, he comes over and um, we start talking. And I got to tell you, you can't, you really can't judge a book by its cover because what I thought was like this, you know, this hard kind of biker guy, because I had met a, bun a bunch of Hell's Angels when I was in college in Oakland. Uh, a, a really good friend of mine, a great artist, Rick Rodriguez, he and a couple other guys rented the, the Hell's Angels old clubhouse on 14th Street in Oakland. And we'd go over there and we'd be working on art projects and stuff. And, you know, 10, 10 bikers would pull up in front, come in and party with us and stuff. I mean, it, they were very strange people. And Simon fit right in there. I mean, you could put him in there and you would swear that he was the Hell's Angel. He had that look. But when he started talking, he was like the softest, just poor. I mean, you, you just fell in love with it. You fell in love with it because he was so unique. I had never met anybody like him because his outside appearance was. But I guess everybody in the 60s was kind of like that anyway. But... <laughs> You know, not that way. I mean, and, and maybe it was because of my exposure to Hell's Angels earlier in college that I, I sort of categorized him immediately like that. And when he started talking and we started talking, it was like, wow, this guy is just really cool. He's just he's not at all like what I expected. And he had a cassette with him that we listened to a couple of cuts. And I gotta tell you, you know, again, his singing voice. And it was exactly the way he looked in real. I mean, that's what I would have expected until I heard him, you know, talking and then singing. Um, and it was like such a strange contradiction in himself. And he wasn't at all like the music that he wrote, wasn't at all like the music that he performed. He, he, but then, you know, I look at other people like Alice Cooper, okay? The, Alice was nothing like what he is on stage, never was, still isn't to this day, you know, but he created that image. It almost killed him, you know, and, and this, but he got around it and Simon kind of did the same thing. I mean, he went through some transitions. He went from doing like a hard rock classic blues kind of thing, uh, biker music uh, to a country Western he did a couple uh, Lonesome Lonesome uh, Lonesome Dave Dakota was a, Lonesome Dave Dakota was his like country name and he you know again with these guys from the Neil Diamonds band and they're in that recording studio and they're doing whatever they want there's no charge or anything so they're experimenting and doing all this great stuff and Simon played I don't know whether he ever released any of it but it was good Lonesome Buck oh, it was Lonesome Buck Dakota. That was his country name. I and, have to check that out. Yeah, check it out. Because I don't know whether he ever released it, you know, but but he might have. I don't know. You know, I mean, I I did a, I did a couple albums for him, and then everything was changing. And you know, sometimes people tend to go away and come back in your life later on. You know, we never really reconnected. But he and his wife Maria and Bonnie and I became good friends. Maria owned a restaurant over on. Uh, on Melrose and Highland. And it was a really great restaurant and they had really great food. And, um, you know, we had become good friends. We, we, you know, went to movies and stuff together a bit. And, but then, you know, things have a way of, you know, pushing you in different directions. And so, you know, when Simon and I started after listening to his music and we were talking about, well, what do you, what do you, like what 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 do you how do you see this album you know uh, looking and he said well you know and and funny enough uh back in the day i used to collect a lot of old magazines from the eight, 1800s 1900s and these little pulp books the little pulp books they were like comic books only small and they were hardbound and they were like pulp fiction kind of things and i had a few of those around the office and uh, in the art department and we were talking and he picked one up and he's looking at it and he goes, you know, I really like it to be like this, you know, and I, I like that this kind of magazine, old magazine book, hardbound look to it. And um, and I wanted to reflect 
the craziness that I have in my music, <laughs> you know? Um, and so Joe Garnett was in the art department along with Drew Struzan. Bill Garland hadn't come along yet. This is 1973. And um, Drew and I were busy doing something else. And so Joe got the call on this. Joe Garnett got the call on this cover. And he did an incredible, <laughs> incredible painting of this kind of dungeonous looking um, uh, torture chamber. And Simon loved it. I mean, he absolutely, and we, I, you know, Joe Garnett was an incredible painter, way underrated, but did some pretty amazing stuff. And like, I think I had mentioned before, Joe did the first Cheech and Chong album. And then he joined us and we did the second Cheech and, well, actually I had done the second Cheech and Chong album before we started Pacific Ioneer. And then Joe was the first illustrator that joined Pacific Ioneer. And then Drew came along and Bill came on, Carl Ramsey, Ingrid, you know, all these other people came afterwards. But Joe uh, and he, and we did the doors cover together, the full circle, the beautiful, amazing painting he did. And this was, Joe was kind of talented like Drew and Bill. They could do different mediums. Joe was an oil painter, but he also could do an airbrush, you know? And so, and, you know, again, you know, that was one thing that Drew never was able to do was airbrush when he joined us. But by the time he left us, airbrush became his major, you know, one of his major form uh, of uh, mediums that he worked in. I mean, when he first came to us, it was oil paints and colored pencil. And by the time he left us, he had done a lot of other things, watercolor, every, a lot of stuff and ended up creating this style, combining all that, that he went on to become very famous in the movie poster business. So it, it's got deep roots and stuff with this. And, and, so Joe did this beautiful painting, and Simon loved it. We loved it. Art Linson loved it. Spin Dizzy Record. The, unfortunately, the, um, the, the media sort of tore it apart because it looked like it was S&M. And it was, and this, you got to remember, this is 1973. So things were a lot different as far as what was okay to say and what okay to look at. And, you know, and then we've got, tortured women hanging in the back over here. You know, I mean, it, and it, this was not like him in real life, but to him, this cover really, really reflected the, um, the attitude of his songs, you know? And again, you know, Alice is an Alice Cooper when he's not on stage, you know? So Simon Stokes wasn't the same Simon, and his actually his name was Nick uh, Stokes, was um, not the same person when he wasn't on stage or in the recording studio. But this album got a lot of controversy because of that. They actually, this was the first album cover to ever be banned in the United States of America. And I take a lot of pride in that. And so did Simon. <laughs> and, so did Simon. and they really knelt it. I mean, they did a real Shep Gordon promoting that. And, and he had a, a moderate hit on this album. It was called The Boa Constrictor Ate My Wife Last Night. OK, and I mean, he has some crazy songs. And have you listened to any of his music yet? Just very briefly, because I never knew about him. I remember when you had mentioned him. See, and there again, I start you start getting the curiosity <laughs> up. Yeah, See, sure. I thought that Norman Greenbaum uh, did this uh, thing early yeah. in his career. Uh, the ache plant that ate Chicago. Yes. Dr. Yeah. West, yeah. you know, at his medicine show. So she said it was not alone, but it sounds like, you know, the uh, public or the reaction probably oh. with the music critics was very very different like this is yeah. Oh, very yeah. dark yeah but they were knew how to spin that and make it a positive thing to audiences especially yeah. bikers but he became he became what uh eric clapton did to guitar players he became singer to bikers i mean he was right up there with uh what's his name from uh, get your motor running you know um who am i thinking of uh John Kay, John Kay Steppenwolf. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. Steppenwolf. I mean, he's right. That song wasn't like every song that they did, but Simon's songs were always kind of the same. They were that real guttural kind of raw, you know, and I think that really appealed to a segment of the population. Obviously, it did. I mean, he never really had any big, huge hits, but, you know, he, 
he didn't – again, he was another one of these guys that really didn't care whether he got a hit or not. You know, it was really being able to – and this album was his debut album. I mean, he had <laughs> played around and did some stuff, but this album was his debut album. So on the front cover, we got Joe Garnett, a beautiful illustration. Joe Patagno was also – an illustrator at Pacific Iron Year at the time. Um, and he did, he went on to do the illustrated Beatles book and he did uh, all the motorhead uh, for Lemmy. He did all the motorhead covers. He's kind of like the Drew Strews end of heavy metal. And he worked with us. Uh, I've got, I think we did about 13 projects together and he did this back cover. Let me get out of the way here. He did this beautiful, and again, I'll send you these images so you can blow them up. But it's this, you got to remember, this is 1973. And this this back cover would be ideal for a, a metal group or a, a, a hard rock group today. You know, I mean, it has all the elements. And Joe Patagno, and you, as you look at this, get out the billion dollar bill from Alice Cooper, the album cover we did for Billion Dollar Babies. Joe did that artwork on that bill, that billion dollar bill. If you look at that, you'll see some of the elements that he put here in these, this border that we created for Simon's back cover. You know, it's, it's the same technique, the same um, ability to draw those kinds of things. And that's why that billion, I don't know whether you've ever looked closely at that billion dollar bill, but it's pretty amazing. It's an amazing illustration front and back, you know? And, uh, and so, you know, Pacific Ioneer, when we started doing this show, I, I really started regaining a whole new respect for the stuff that we did 50 years ago and how it still is meaningful to people today. I mean, and it, and it just reinforced in me as an artist, one of the things that I always tried to do always was never follow a, a, a trend or a fad, because that'll get you in trouble. That's like stopping and becoming history. You got to keep moving. As long as you're moving, you can never become history, you know? And so going along with that, the same attitude that I try to project into everything that I did, whether it was album covers or it was corporate work, I didn't, I wanted to become a lifestyle. And these covers, these 250 album covers that I've done, have become a lifestyle. Some better known to, than others, but still every one of them. It's like having 250 kids. It's like Ma Kettle. She's got 100 kids. She knows every one of them's name and she knows every one of them's history and stuff. And I'm sort of the same way. And, and doing this show with you and the, and the knowledge that you bring to it and the interaction that we have, I really, honestly, I look forward to it every week. I, I, I get so you know, rejuvenated by us looking at this stuff. And, and again, it's as strong today as it was back 50 years ago. And that's really something. It you know, is. You can look at artists like Peter Max. Peter Max was huge, but today it was history. I mean, nobody, it doesn't really hold water today. Uh, you see that a lot in, in television where they, and in movies where they try to take something that was very popular 25 years ago, whether it was a sitcom or a movie, and remake it. And it never really quite makes it. They don't get the fact that, and even if they try and make it more diverse and they try and make it more current and not back in the day when it happened, first was a hit, they just don't seem to understand it, which I think is a reflection on the lack of creativity in both those fields. And it's not the, the creator. It's the corporate piece that beats you up. That's the problem. The thing that I loved about doing these album covers was the crazier we were, and you've heard me say this, the crazier we were, the better that they loved it, the better the fans loved it. In corporate America, they're very scared of that. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants, they, they hire you and they tell you, show us out of the box. We want to see, we want to be out of the box and show us something really unique. And you show it to them, scares the hell out. They go back on it. They go back on the mission. Yes, they fully exactly. go back on the mission. And yeah. doing, we're doing that back thing, you know? And, and, and you're the same in your business, too. Exact same thing in your business. And, and, and that's why you are doing what you love rather than what you're told to do, you know? And, and you know, we all have restrictions to a to degree, but you can also, they can become a, 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 a 
golden cage. Yeah, it's homogenization, and homogenization kills creativity. Yeah, and that, and that I've I've always believed, and that's what I, I I'm so intrigued when you share about these album covers. Now, Ernie, I wanted to ask you: Was banned here in the states? Was it released anywhere overseas, or was it huge, there... huge in Australia? Was it? No. Oh my, I thought no. so. <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think in Germany. I mean, you know, that's why we we were able to do the next album, which was the Buzzard of Love. <laughs> that album. I mean, he, he would come up with this crazy stuff. He would show up at the office. He'd just come by and he, we would just spend hours. You know, he was, I think if I had to pick one artist that I truly, truly love, like a brother, and there, there are a bunch, but no one takes Simon's place. Simon was a beautiful, beautiful individual a wonderful individual and his wife and, and the great little side story that nobody really knows but simon uh, his neighbor had this dog and it was like a mixed terrier kind of dog it, it really looked like something out of lady in the tramp you know it was this funky dog and the neighbor was a, i guess a couple houses up and every time they let the dog out, it would run to Simon's house and run and sit with Simon. It loved Simon. Okay. And, and this, is the kind of, this is the kind of person he was. He, he loved him. And he loved that happened so many times that the neighbor ended up giving Simon the dog. Well, that's a great story. And Simon named it Beans because it was like a hobo dog. It was like, and Simon could really relate to that run funky kind of stuff and he named it beans and everywhere that simon went beans went with it and he would come over to the house and i i i'd see him coming you know he tell me he's coming i go downstairs and there he is with beans and beans is sitting you know and they're on right next to him in the car and then he gets up on his lap i mean it was just it was a wonderful i mean as i think back on it because simon passed away in 2020. oh it's a shame yeah, it really was. And, and I, I had lost, by that time, I had lost touch with it. And I, you know, life has a way of just pushing you in other directions and making you forget stuff. You know, and again, that's another reason why I love, you know, doing this with you and all our wonderful neighbors. It's, you know, for me, it's just, it's, it's such an emotional trip. This album and this preparation that I did for our show today was probably one of the most um, heartfelt ones that I've ever done. I mean, I, I really miss him. I, I miss him. And we're doing this and you requesting this or, or agreeing to this really made me remember how much I love this guy and what a beautiful person he was. He was truly, he was truly a beautiful person and a good person. He wouldn't hurt a fly. But when you look at him and you listen to him, you know, it's like a whole different, a whole different trip. But that's okay, because that's, he was a showman, you know, we did, we did last week, we did that uh, uh, Black Oak, Arkansas thing that they're going to see this week. And, you know, those guys were kind of like that too, Jim and Dirt and those guys and Butch. It was, it was an amazing time, Joyce. It really was. And, and I know that, you know, you, you can't ever make it like it was, but by doing Ernie's Corner on the block party with you is, is, making it available for me to remember all this stuff and relive it and and emotionally be moved by it because I was. I mean, each one of these projects was an emotional connection to what we were trying to do. I could show you thousands of things that we did and none of them looked the same. That's why I said you never follow a trend, never follow a fad. You try and create everything that you do as a lifestyle. That stone stung I did 53 years ago would be still good today, yeah. you know, and still is. You know, in one form or another, it doesn't matter whether I was the chicken or the egg. You've heard me say that. I, I'm just glad to be part of that process from the chicken to the egg back to the chicken. <laughs> well, you know, the beauty of, of of situations like this, because and, and one of the things I'm so proud to do, Ernie's Corner and feature the work that you and Pacific Eye and Air did, something like this that was not understood back in that particular time. Now we fast forward and people are finding out about it. 
you know, there's a different mindset. And now they're in the space to be able to go ahead and discover what they, might have been banned in, in the past. I mean, people thought Arthur Brown was totally yeah. crazy. Yeah, they were waiting for him to catch on fire with that thing on his head. But I they, know. You know, thank God for people like you, Joyce, and the block party for making that available to people. Making Because life is, you know, I'll never stop learning because life and nature never stops teaching. It's as simple as that. And thank God for you and our neighbors on the block who tune in every week. And, and you know, uh, for whatever reason, I think it's mainly to talk to, to listen to you and, and learn. And, I, and I'm glad to be able to be a little bit a part of that, you know. And, and like you said, even to you, someone that's such a pro, finding things that you never knew existed, you know. And there are plenty. Believe me, there you've got that partial list. There are more. I've, I've got twice that many that I, since I've been looking and organizing stuff for this this online gallery that we're talking about doing after the first of the year. Um, and oh, one other quick thing that I wanted to talk about this real quickly is the logo that I did. And I'll Ooh. send you that big so you can blow it up. This was another one of those. I loved working with art illustrators and as a designer because we respected the value that each of us brought to the finished piece. And we always were able to find a place for my lettering. I always try to, when you look at this logo up close, it is the amazing, the, the incredible Simon Stokes and the Black Whip Thrill Band. Now that's a lot of type. It is. <laughs> but this logo is tight and it works really well. And again, I, I have a blow up of it that I'm gonna be sending you these files with, but I love, Work and Drew went on years later to say, um, uh, and he's told me that he said the one one of the really great things outside of learning and developing his chops was to have a mutual respect for what each of us brought to it. In the movie business, it was never like that. It was dictated to him. Okay, here's where that's going to go, and we need you know. And so he was. That's it's the it's the choice that you made. I could have made that choice, made a lot of money, worked myself half to death, and or I could go the other way and just be happy and love everything that I do. And yeah, certainly, you know, there are ups and downs, you know, I mean, but life is up and down. It's, it's that's, you know, that's the whole part of living and, and why we do it and what makes it so interesting, you know, I mean, Time is such an amazing thing. If there was no time, everything would happen at once and it wouldn't be as interesting as it is you know, the cliffhanger on Friday to the, <laughs> the, to the next chapter on Monday, you know what I mean? So, but now I know the song. I'm, I, I'm looking forward to this because as I mentioned, I'm still learning about Simon, thanks to you. So I want to hear your choices. Well, I mean, there, he did a lot of great stuff, but for me, the bow constrictor ate my wife last night was great. And then the devil just called my name. So if you had to choose between those two, People already know the boa constrictor ate my wife last night. There are a few of them out there. But the devil just called my name is Simon. It is Simon and his sense of humor. And as much a showman as Alice or Jim Dandy or any of these other guys, you know, he, he knew how to communicate with people, you know, and, and that's really something. And he wasn't care. He didn't care about all the people. He just cared about the people that loved his music the way he did. And he was a true musician, one that I'll miss dearly. So, thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank yeah. you for the memories. Thank you, too. You know, we uh, I know we've got so many great things planned because we're going to be learning. And I, I'm still interested. I want to do that band one that you talked about. Yes. Yeah, I never good... knew about them. Yeah, and you've heard some of the music. I started to explore. See, that's, again, it's the beauty of it. You know, when you put those album covers and you make mention, I, I really hope, and it's my dream, that, you know, the, the family of the block party is also exploring and seeing, you yeah. know, what, what it was they, about. I think they are, because like I said, each week the, the views go up on what I post. I know they're probably doing the same for you, and, and I get a lot of emails. You know, from people going, I really love the show. And, you know, I'm a big follower of the show already. And you've added a nice touch. It. I've learned a lot, you know, and that's really 
that's so rewarding for me, you know, I mean, and I know it is for you too. Yes. And, you know, I really, like I said, I really look forward to, you know, to doing these with you. And um, yeah, there's going to be, there's plenty, to, plenty ahead of us, you know, and I, and I think that there's some big ones that we haven't talked about as well. We don't want to do all the big ones first and then let it dribble down. But for me, every one of these is a big one, whether it was a hit or not, whether you ever heard of the group or not, the Haley brothers is another one that, you, you know, is going to be good, just like good thunder. I mean, there's, and there's some great, I said it before, I'll say it again. Sometimes the littlest thing creates the biggest story. 